gosh, you know, I think the trickiest part about a partnership is that uncomfortable teenage phase of going from the informal to the formal. And I've done it wrong in the past, to be honest. One of the biggest mistakes I've ever made is when you're a founder, if you're a good founder, you generate, you attract energy, right? Because you are so passionate about what you're doing. People just want to be around you. And I've had the experience before where people get attracted to the energy. They say, you know what? I just want to help. I, I don't need a title. I don't need to be a partner. I just want to be part of the team. Maybe they're not working full time and they just have part time to offer you. And so you gladly say, wow, well, I'm resource constrained. I could use the help. And somewhere in there, the person all of a sudden starts to want to be compensated or want to be appreciated differently or want to have the title, and they may not even verbalize it. But then over time, you start to get this friction and you're like, what's going on? Well, I'm not feeling appreciated. And as the founder, you're thinking, well, you volunteered to jump on board, right? <laughs> and so that's always the rub. Even though it's easier to stay informal longer because it's fun, and it doesn't take a lot of time, the earlier you can formalize things even a little bit, right? Could be a one page that says, here's my understanding of your role. Here's my understanding of what you want to get out of this. And we'll reevaluate it in three months. And the first three months might be, there is no compensation. They just want to be part of the team. They want to have something to do with their time. But if you revisit that every couple months, they have the chance to speak up and say, now I really want to be more in the game. You know, I want to have some compensation, et cetera. So don't let it go too long would be my first advice. 